Good morning, everyone. I hope you're really well as we uh, gather for uh, this service, looking at the last half of John chapter 10. And we've seen a lot through John, haven't we, of uh, Jesus coming to fulfil God's purposes. Uh, and our theme verse for this morning is there in uh, chapter 6, verse 40. For my Father's will, what is that? Is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. Jesus is going to raise his people. It's the Father's will. Jesus has come to do the Father's will. He will raise them up on the last day. Who are these people? Those who look to Jesus and believe in him. It's crucial then that we respond to Jesus with faith, isn't it? Which we're going to see again. Some people do and some people don't in John chapter 10. We want to be people who who come to Jesus this morning to believe more about him, to learn afresh the truth from Jesus. And so we're going to say together our opening words taken out of Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 3. We say together, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his path. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, would that be our experience this morning? Would you Teach us your ways that we may walk in your paths towards Jesus, uh, hearing his words, hearing his voice, following him, our good shepherd, and so uh, raised on the last day by his power in your will. For Jesus' sake. Amen. We're going to uh, respond to those opening words in song.
Well, we are the people of the risen king gathered to listen to his voice. But of course, we all know that we don't always listen to Jesus. We don't always want to hear the things that Jesus says. And so it's right that we begin our time together with the words of the confession. So we say together, Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we've sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We're truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Before we come to God's word, let's say the words of the Creed together. We say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, we're going to come hear our readings in just a moment. But before we do, uh, we're going to sing to God be the glory.
reading is taken from John, chapter 10, verses 22 to 42. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered round him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Again his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you are a mere man, claim to be God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own, and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy, because I said, I am God's son? Do not believe me unless I do the works of my Father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I in the Father. Again they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. Then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptising in the early days. There he stayed, and many people came to him. They said, though John never performed a sign, all that John said about this man was true. And in that place, many believed in Jesus. This is the word of God. Good morning, I'm Richard, and I'd like to pray for us as we begin. Our Father, as we prayed last week, we pray again. May we respond like sheep to the words of the Good Shepherd. Amen. There is a new topic of conversation on the block at the moment. The British staple small talk starter always used to be the weather, didn't it? Now it runs something like this. Morning. Have you had your Covid jab yet? Absolutely. Had my second dose yesterday. When did you, which did you have? AstraZeneca. Were you poorly with it? And so it goes on. One of my colleagues said to me when his parents had their first jab, I was surprised how relieved I felt. It's understandable. We want to know we're safe. We want to know our loved ones are safe. As we walk out of the vaccination centre, I'm sure we do feel a sense of relief as we cross the road and find ourselves flattened by the number 64 bus. Sorry, probably poor taste, but I'm only partly joking. I hope it won't come as too much of a surprise to you that we are all going to die. One way or another, we will lose our loved ones and death will take us all. It is the great tragedy of our human existence and no amount of vaccination programmes or healthcare systems or health and safety regulations are going to stop that. If I stood here and told you I had a cure for death, you'd think I was insensitive at best. And yet, that is exactly what I'm going to do, or at least that's what Jesus is going to do. Verse 27 and 28 of our reading. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Is that offer believable? Last week we asked the question, how can you spot a shepherd? We saw how Jesus claimed to be the good shepherd. His focus 
was on God and on God's sheep to such an extent that he was willing to die and rise to make eternal life possible for the sheep. So yes, Jesus really can offer eternal life to the sheep because his death and resurrection are verifiable historical events that prove the truth of what he claims. So the question that remains is, who are his sheep? Who are the ones who are safe for all eternity, for whom death is not the end? How can you and I be 100% confident that we will never perish? If last week was about how you spot a shepherd, this week is about how you spot a sheep. Look down with me at verse 27 again. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. You want to know if you're a sheep? To know if your loved ones are sheep? He couldn't be clearer, could he? Sheep listen to Jesus. They follow Jesus. And they are kept safe by Jesus. The image of sheep and shepherd is perfect. Let me unpack it a little. We recently purchased a small caravan as a family and as we homeschool our kids we don't have to stick so strictly to school holidays. The only person who's less flexible is me unfortunately. Sometimes having only 25 days holiday can be a pain. So the week before last the rest of my family went on holiday without me. Yeah, a little bit of sympathy please. And on this occasion, the dog also stayed behind to keep me company. So it was just me and Molly in the house. Molly's the dog. When I made my breakfast, there was Molly at my feet. When I sat down to work, there was Molly at my feet. When I went downstairs to lunch, there was Molly at my feet. When I went to the loo, Yep. Even when I went to bed, there was Molly, Molly's head on my wife's pillow. And on the very rare occasion when Molly had fallen asleep and I had gone elsewhere unnoticed, as soon as she heard my voice, she was by my side within seconds. That's how sheep behave in Palestine. They don't use dogs to round up their sheep. The sheep hear the voice of the shepherd and come running, listening and following, hearing and obeying. That's what sheep do. In verses 40 to 42, we have an example of what sheep look like. I'll read from verse 41. And many people came to him. They said, though John never performed a sign, all that John said about this man was true, and in that place many believed in Jesus. Notice that the emphasis is on the words. They hear God's words through John the Baptist about Jesus and obey them by believing in Jesus. And notice that in their case, the miracles confirm what they believe rather than causing their belief. Believing on the basis of miracles is not bad, but believing on the basis of the word is better. It is important to consider, am I a sheep? Do I listen to, seek out and feed from God's word in the Bible? And when we hear him speak, do we believe him? Do we trust him? Do we follow him? Do we make the reading of God's word a daily habit? For it is by his word that he keeps you safe. Look back at last week's passage, verse 3. The 
The sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. It is through his word that he guides us, he takes care of us, he protects us and keeps us. Verse 27 again. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. He'll keep you. He'll protect you. He'll give you eternal life if you keep listening to and believing his word. The only person who can take eternity away from me is me, if I choose to walk away from his word. But if we listen and we follow, then he will keep us. And so will his father. Verse 29. My father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. If you want to be kept safe from COVID, get vaccinated. It will help. But if you want to be kept safe from death, if you want to have eternal life, be a sheep. Listen to Jesus. Follow Jesus. And God himself will keep you safe. Let's pray. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Our Father, thank you for Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Thank you that you are keeping us safe for eternity through your word. Lord, we repent of the times when we have not been willing to listen, when we have been determined to believe our own opinions and refuse to hear what you say. Lord, forgive us. Help us to change. Help us to respond to your word with belief. Help us to follow your Son. And Lord, we lift to you our loved ones, our friends, our family members and our neighbours, who are convinced by what they hear about Jesus apart from the Bible and so do not believe. Lord, take away their blindness and give us an opportunity to bring the words of Jesus to them. May they respond as your sheep. Amen. Let us all pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we would just like to bring our concerns and requests before you now. And we are particularly reminded in Isaiah chapter 6, Father, that we can only come to you because of what Jesus has done through him and him alone. And we would just like to pray, Father, for first of all our Queen and give you great thanks for her declared faith in Jesus. We would also like to pray for Justin Welby, Stephen Cottrell and the General Synod as well as the local deanery synods as well as the diocesan synod father. We also would like to pray and give you great thanks for the opportunities that we have through the Church of England and the way that it is within the fabric of society father. We pray particularly for the abundance of teaching that you have given to us in Ash and in John. And we just give you great thanks for them and their families, Father. We also would like to pray for the opportunities that you present to us with our families, with our friends, our work colleagues, that we can look out and tell people of Jesus. And we just give you great thanks, Father, in these times of uncertainty, because Jesus said, 
that he is the truth, the way and the life. He is the only certainty in this life. And we just give you great thanks, Father. And we bring our prayer before you now in Jesus' name. Amen. We would now like to pray, Heavenly Father, for David and Ruth Lowry, our mission partners in Senegal. We do give you great thanks and for the challenges that they represent and the way that they have stepped out in faith, Father, to do translation work and bringing the Karen language or bringing the Bible to them in the Karen language. And we just thank you, Lord, that they are totally reliant upon you and this is demonstrated in their lives with the provision that you have made for their well-being in their housing, for the restrictions in movement and the way that you are enabling this translation work to go forward, Father. We pray for support for them with the team of people around them. And we also particularly, Father, ask for the necessary resources to enable them to fulfill the work for you. And we just give you great thanks that this work is progressing through being able to use mobile phones, which seems strange, but your holy word can go out into the Karan language through using this media. And we just give you great thanks, Lord, for the work that they're doing. And we ask for blessings upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we would just like to pray for our two ministries, St. Luke's and St. Andrew's. We do pray, Father, for the development of the Sunday School and Crash at St. Andrew's Church and the desperate need for this to develop. We do pray, Father, that you will be Lord of the decision-making process with Jonathan, our architect, as well as the DAC, when the plans are put forward. And we just lay this before you now, asking that you will overrule and that your will be done, Father. We do pray as well for our Sunday school and the young people, particularly with um, Sally, Liz and Mim with the mums and tots and the Sunday school with Laura Pike, Suzanne Roberts, Naomi Foster Lord and the work that they all do, bringing the name of Jesus before our young people. And we do pray as well, Father, for the administrative side of the church, particularly with Jane Eamon, for Peter Roberts and Janet Alwick, and the development with the building teams and all of the changes that are being overseen by John and Ash, Lord. We particularly um, give you great thanks, but knowing that Everything is in your hands, Lord, and we just would like to pray for our older people now that things are opening up and that we can have more contact with them and encourage them. We do also, Father, just bring before you now in a moment of silent prayer situations and issues known to us for which we would seek your help and guidance. We bring all our prayers before you in the name of our wonderful Saviour, Jesus. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we conclude with a great old hymn that leads us to 
proclaim the, the great glory of Jesus, who is our risen King. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. 
Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>